Actually, I had kids. <laughs> and I realized that I had to give it my all or sell the instruments. I nearly gave up. I'm Jay. I'm a flutist, a recording artist, a visual artist, a graphic designer, a mom, and I'm known as the Wild Flute. How hard can it be? So the best way to start is just to start. And um, I've been on screen a little bit trying to promote my projects and do all the things to be socially and digitally responsible as an artist. Um, but I'm doing a vlog and it feels really strange to just kind of talk to myself. <laughs> um, I think everybody experiences that when they're here doing it. It's kind of fun. Um, now that I'm actually comfortable calling myself an artist, even in the music sphere, that was a whole journey on its own. Um, I want to share maybe some of the things I learned from the first time and show you what I'm doing the second time. Some of you already created albums and uh, do it in your bedrooms or you have quartets and you're doing it already. This is my first time and I think there are people out there who might be intimidated by the whole prospect and it really was actually kind of difficult. But at the beginning I just said how hard can it be? Um, I found out how hard it can be. But it was also exhilarating and gave back so much uh, from the effort I put in. And that's why I'm doing it again. Uh, so come along with me and find out how to make a classical music recording from scratch. Okay, I have my copy beautiful chrome mug made in Nova Scotia where I'm from so where this all started um no where I started I've been an orchestral player uh, for most of my career I went to school uh, in Toronto at UP University of Toronto faculty of music I took performance and um, that's all I wanted to do I knew that that's what I wanted to do in high school when I played Beethoven the Five uh, with our orchestra, and I ran into some roadblocks. Yeah. In first year, I had some hand problems, and I couldn't really practice as much as I had wanted to. The only times I could play were in rehearsal, and so I've been spending my time, even since high school, uh, dealing with. Um, chiropractic pain and hand pain and just trying to find some therapeutic help um, with not a lot of budget to support that. So um, my dream really was to uh, try and win an audition to get good enough to at least be called for freelance gigs, that kind of thing. I didn't have any chamber groups that I formed. Uh, at school, I didn't uh, really have a duet partner. It was just me. And uh, so I worked as best as I could to get good enough to do auditions and to play. And it was actually, honestly, kind of a struggle. I just noticed I just put my glasses on my head. They weren't there before. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I reached a point when I was doing auditions that my hands just couldn't do the amount of practicing. And no matter how I was practicing, I couldn't get past certain technical things. And I really thought it was me. <laughs> um, I thought I just didn't have the technique. I wasn't naturally talented and I didn't even know what I was doing there. But I kept trying. I was playing in every community orchestra in town and enjoying that very much, um, playing difficult things there and managing. Um, I, you know, a couple of years after that, I found a guitar partner and we still play some, you know, gentle gigs together. And, but it just wasn't enough. Um, 
actually, I had kids. <laughs> and I realized that I had to give it my all or sell the instruments. I nearly gave up. Um, I was trying to earn money. I was working in film where I met my husband. And I thought I have to give it one more try to really push through and see if I can make something, some kind of career in the orchestral world. It never really occurred to me that I would want to record anything or write my own music or do anything at all like that. Um, didn't even occur to me. <laughs> when I, after I made the decision to kind of do it or sell it, I connected with a couple of fantastic uh, flute teachers um, in my own city. My flute teacher was still here, but, um, but uh, I wanted another voice in my head and um, they really helped me get to a certain point. But in the interim, I also had had children. That's really what the impetus was. Um, I've got kids. I've tried all these other kinds of careers. Music is what really gave me a lot of joy. Um, so what does that look like? How do I make that happen? And what I realized, I'd had kids and well, my, after my first child, some kind of hormone was released and it actually relaxed a number of my muscles enough so that I could actually practice longer and the things I was practicing were staying and sticking and something happened. And I'd been seeing massage therapy fairly regularly, but it, um, not as often as I really needed. And once my eldest child started school, I met this fantastic massage therapist who really helped me out because I couldn't afford weekly massage therapy, but she really helped me out and we managed to get into my hands. We did, I had all kinds of neck and shoulder problems, uh, like most musicians, especially flute players, but my hands had never been dealt with and I didn't even realize I had hand issues when she finally got into them, dug right in there and I realized it wasn't me. <laughs> it was these tight tendons and ligaments that were so sore and I couldn't get a stretch and I didn't know why. And it was really, you know, five years after that, that I met um, a rheumatologist who said, well, you have hypermobile joints. That's, you know, most people with, with obvious um, uh, hypermobility usually has like elbows that can almost go backwards and that kind of thing. And I didn't have that, but I found out it can happen in isolated joints and not all joints. And so that was my problem with my hands. They're bendy and they just don't get a stretch. And so my ligaments were carrying the load that the joints should have been or something. But, uh, so that was kind of a revelation. So understanding that and getting things that were difficult. So I started to get better very quickly. Um, my practicing habits were actually pretty good. Um, I just focused on them. I started doing auditions all the time and I get hired now uh, to play freelance. And it's not um, a booming career. There's a lot of flute players in town, um, but I'm playing well. and. Uh, it was in this time that one of my friends that I had met playing with a number of these orchestras, uh, Betsy Rom, she, <coughs> she really wanted to encourage me and she said, go get a factor grant and I'll write you a piece. Um, a factor grant is uh, a grant that we can get in Canada um, to support new recording. It mostly goes to uh, indie, rock, pop, you know, other genres, but classical musicians also apply for them. And it helps support us in a very expensive um, uh, venture of creating a recording. And uh, so, okay. My first thought was not a good one, um, but I'm up, I'm always up for a challenge. So I thought, okay, I will apply. And then I started a Kickstarter to help support the commissioning fees. I had to come up with a story. 
uh, to apply for these FACTA grants. As I went through the grant process, I realized all these applications, what needed to be done. I did some research and uh, that, that told me some more things that I needed to help get people on my side to want to support the project. Um, and so I built the story for the Kickstarter and I built, uh, I, I needed a marketing plan. So I looked up what marketing plans are needed. And so through all of that research, I've built um, an interesting catalog of things that need to be done to do a recording that I didn't know when I first started. All I had was, how hard can it be? <laughs> That's kind of an inside family joke. So how hard can it be? And so I got the grant and I got a county council grant and um, I applied for more grants for live performance. It was over COVID. So I think there's a little bit more money available. I was very lucky. And, pardon me. and I um, created this project and through it all, I wanted to make sure that every artist or every person that was involved in this project uh, contributed their vision their artistry their responses to all the things that were going on that i was doing it wasn't about me it was about comp our canadian composers wild spaces artistry creating a project involving people collaboration that was my mission and then it released in 2021 and then I said, well, somebody's got to play it live. And so I created some live premieres, took it to the National Flute Association, which was in Chicago in 2022, their 50th anniversary. And I got to perform some of those pieces. That was very exciting. And in the interim, building my profile up as a flutist in Canada. But boy, did that experience spark something in me something creative something i never thought i would i never even thought of i uh, got the spark to write my own music to maybe improvise that was uh, something that one of my music partners suggested i try and i really enjoyed it and so i've been percolating some ideas i've been working on other projects but now i think it's time for a second flute in the wild uh, album and commissioning project. So this one is going to feature two flutes. And I will be uh, having my flute partner on. Um, she's a, a new duet partner for me. Uh, fantastic Canadian flutist and uh, new music um, aficionado. And so she, uh, her name is Sophie Lancier, and I'm grateful to her. For, uh, her being willing to join me on this fun journey. We'll be doing some posting later. Maybe I'll have her on as an interview. But here we are. Um, going through the process of this project, I have found confidence. I have found voice. I have found uh, new creative outlets, new creative desires. And I'm battling back that imposter, the gremlin that has been haunting me. It keeps getting louder every time I start something new. Boy, does it get loud. Um, so, more stories next time. Follow along my journey of being the wild flute. How hard can it be?